trending now on comonews.com. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. We want to get straight to some breaking news today. Firefighters just rescued five teenagers who fell through the ice in New York Central Park. This all happened in a pond on the southern end of the park. Emergency crews said the teens somehow fell into the water and they're currently being treated at that scene. So many emergency crews surrounding it, as you can see. The big concern here, the temperature of the water. Water temps currently in the 40s there. Unclear how long the teens were in the water or if there are any others currently getting rescued. We'll keep a close eye on this situation and let you know as soon as we learn more. And right now, dozens of coast-to-coast not-my-president protests are winding down. And while most remain peaceful, just in the last few hours, dozens of protesters and police clashed in the streets of Portland. Officers say most of the people who they arrested were all part of a group that did not have a permit to march today, and they were blocking traffic. At this moment, still unclear how many people were arrested at that scene, which you can see was very tense with police. And while those protesters spoke out against President Donald Trump, meanwhile, the president on his way back to Washington, D.C., right as we speak. But before leaving Florida this afternoon, the president announced Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster as his new national security advisor. Now, of course, you'll know McMaster replaces Michael Flynn, who resigned after misleading the vice president about his contacts with Russia. And we want to go live now to Olympia, where Governor Jay Inslee is holding a press conference to lay out the financial damage our state would see if President Trump and Congress repeal the Affordable Care Act. Let's listen in. They do what we want them to do. So it is time to speak up, to rise up, tell them that we exist, tell them that our lives matter and demand that they start doing their jobs. Thank you. And again, you're looking live as Governor Inslee and a young woman spoke about the issues our state would face if Congress and the President repealed the Affordable Care Act. Come with Keith Eldridge talking to a few people whose lives would change very dramatically. He's working on that story for Como News at 5 o'clock. Developing this afternoon, doctors believe one of two police officers ambushed at a crash will recover from his injuries. Now, police in California say someone driving a stolen car shot the two officers moments after they arrived. Officers from all over the state just escorted one officer's body to the coroner's office. Detectives don't know why the gunman started shooting, but they do believe he was a gang member. And detectives say two women in Snohomish County were attacked with a carpet knife by a man working on their own home. Come with Michelle Esteban just sent in this report from the field. Hi guys, Michelle Esteban here. I just wrapped up a really incredible interview with the son of the woman who was killed in Snohomish. Her daughter also attacked. Police say a contractor attacked both of them, but their son, just an incredible interview talking about how incredibly sweet his mother was, that she was just a typical grandmother that made cookies for everybody that came to the house. And his question tonight is he just can't understand who or why anybody would hurt his mother and attack his disabled sister. We're going to hear from him coming up at 4 and 6 o'clock, and we're also learning much more about the suspect. All right, Ms. Uh, Michelle, we'll see you shortly. Happening now, doctors trying to save someone's life after this bad-looking crash in Renton. Firefighters say this truck smashed into a power pole on the Maple Valley Highway. They had to cut open the truck to pull out the driver, who we're told has life-threatening injuries. Still unclear what caused the crash. You're looking live now at snow falling at Snoqualmie Pass, and it is falling for sure. No restrictions or issues here at the moment, but heavy amounts of snow going to fall on our mountains over the next several hours. We'll be keeping an eye on all of it. But all the rain just created two new problems in our lowlands. Deputies in Clark County just tweeted about this small slide blocking part of a highway there. And in West Seattle, take a look at this. A waste management trunk got stuck in a sinkhole. Now, we don't know what caused the sinkhole, but workers are trying to figure out how exactly to get that truck out safely. And, of course, with all that in mind, Steve Poole joins us with a first look at our forecast. Steve, rain definitely not leaving anytime soon here. Yeah, and it will have an impact on your commute. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a good evening. Let's see how things are going to be shaping up for you. Yes, there's some moisture out there, and there will be as we go throughout our evening commute here. But all in all, most of the really high-impact stuff is going on down in California, and we'll keep an eye on that because that's that might be historic in nature. Uh, we talked about the, the mountains there, and Morgan just showed you a little bit uh, on what's happening up there. But right now we're seeing a shrinking area of concern. It's mainly in the southern portions of the Cascades and from there we expect to see some improvement on our roadways through the mountain passes. Here's a look at the traffic in general and 
Don't see too much to trouble you there. And again, we're watching the mountains pretty closely. 45 degrees right now. We do have nearly two tenths of an inch of rain in the rain gauge. And temperatures are generally in the mid 40s to the upper 40s. So uh, this gives you an idea of what we're going to be having tonight. Mostly cloudy skies. It'll be a little rainy at times. But we will get some breaks at times tomorrow. And we'll talk about that as the program continues. Suffice to say, it's uh, kind of northwest normal. All right, there you have it. There's where you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Back to you, Morgan. Northwest Normal. I like it. Steve, thanks. And by the way, after another day of rain, Como Scott Sistek says we are now in the middle of the fourth wettest February Seattle has ever seen. We received more than eight inches of rain so far. The record, a little more than nine inches. That's back in 1961. And guess what? We still have eight more days to beat it. I want to take you now to Chicago, where this United flight from Florida had to make an emergency landing before it finished taking off. The airline says two tires blew out. Nobody was hurt, but the nearly 160 people on board had to get rebooked onto brand new flights. Those passengers should be leaving in the next hour or so. Detectives are trying to trace back bomb threats phoned into this Jewish community center and several others all around the country today. Fortunately, police found no bomb in Houston or anywhere else. The center just reopened in the last hour or so. The Jewish Community Center Association in North America claims at least 10 other threats were made today after nearly 50 more just last month. Well, I want to show you the end of this dramatic high-speed chase in Massachusetts. We just received this video from state police who say a 24-year-old ran him off the road while trying to speed through several towns. Eventually, they caught up to and stopped the driver, who's now facing several charges. Officers say the chase started when they tried to pull him over for an expired registration. Firefighters in Illinois just finished putting out this small but bad looking fire burning right alongside a busy highway. And you can see just how intensely those flames burned there, just feet away from cars. At this point, still unknown if anyone was hurt or what caused that roadside blaze. Straight ahead, a new immigration crackdown. The post by a Washington school teacher now stoking new fears and the true cost of traffic, the eye-opening hidden cost of your own commute, and all you should actually be glad if you get stuck in Seattle gridlock. Plus, the hole that just opened up in the middle of a lake and why that's actually a good thing. Stay with us. Welcome back. I want to show you this live look at Fort Lee, New Jersey today, where a police chase led to a dramatic and very dangerous standoff. Now, police say they were trying to arrest somebody for drugs, but the chase ended here at a cliff overlooking the Hudson River. Witnesses say the suspect is hanging off of those cliffs. Police called in firefighters to bring in a ladder to try and get that suspect down safely. Well, is there a new push to turn in undocumented immigrants to federal authorities? A post from a teacher in our state getting a lot of notice today. Comes Matt Markovich working on that story. So we're working on a story about the fear of undocumented people, namely workers, about their fear of being turned in in light of what's happened over the last couple hours and a couple of days. Uh, you've seen a lot of workers, they stand on the street corner, uh, they're trying to get jobs, and now there's a push primarily by one teacher in Prosser who posts on our Facebook page that we should all start turning in people we know that is undocumented to contribute to the national well-being that President Trump is trying to, the agenda he's trying to set. So we're working on a story on whether or not that can really happen here in Seattle. All right, Matt, we'll be watching. Well, a whole lot of you weighing in on this story about the sudden sticker shock in car tab renewal bills. This increase in fees comes from voters passing Sound Transit 3 in King Pierce and Snohomish counties back in November. ST3 raised the car tab tax by 0.8% of a vehicle's value, or about $80 for every $10,000 in value. Sales taxes and property taxes also impacted by ST3. It is hard to believe, but this hole in the middle of a lake, actually a good thing, believe it or not. For the first time in almost 10 years, the water level at this California lake rose high enough to drain into a giant vertical spillway. That's man-made. It helps generate power, and workers believe it'll look like this well into even next weekend. Steve Poole just posted an update to our own forecast, and Steve, rain to the south, rain to the north, rain for us as well, looks like. Yeah, pretty much so, but the good news here is it doesn't look like it's all that heavy. Yes, you'll still have some wet streets for your evening commute, but uh, it's not bad, especially when you compare what's going on 
down south of us. Here's a look at the live radar. You can see all those areas in the greens and yellow. That's your, your rain that's in the neighborhood and certainly will have an impact going forward. So we prepare for wet streets. Here's a look at the rainfall totals for today so far. And, you know, it doesn't look at, at all like what we had before when we were really getting, you know, a lot of rain coming down. But still, you know, we're dealing with some wet streets and then you know what that does. It always slows things down. It's 45 degrees right now with a southwesterly wind, as you can see. Your overnight low temperatures would be somewhere from the upper 30s to about the low 40s. About in the same range that we were throughout the weekend there. And of course, we'll continue to see some showers kind of on again, off again as we go along. So that's the main story here. Yes, we have the showers. Here's the future cast starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Just a few showers kind of hanging around. So we're going to leave that in there as at least the potential. But I wouldn't change my plans. I wouldn't worry about it too much because it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of moisture coming with it. Although, you know, wet streets are wet streets. Here's what we've got for your high temperatures in the central basin. We've got you from 46 to about 48 degrees. Up north, you'll be cooler than that, no doubt about it. We've got you in the mid-40s mid along the Strait of Juan de Fuca, up there in Vancouver. Hello to you folks, 44 for your high temperature. Uh, all the folks living on the west side and around, say, Bremerton and all the way down into Olympia, also in the mid to upper 40s range, and that applies on the coast as well. So the overall picture of things, showers on again, off again, but not the type and variety that I think is going to cause a big problem for you. Up in the mountain passes, we're seeing some definite progress up there so we should be fine about uh, 2,500 feet on the snow level if you're having to be traveling through the mountain passes of course we keep you posted on that and finally east of the mountains uh, high temperatures should be somewhere in the mid 40s hey we're gonna see a little bit of sunshine over there we're gonna call that uh, not too bad on the other hand uh, temperatures will lean on the cool side 41 degrees then tonight tomorrow we've got you at 47 and chance of showers on and off throughout the day there's your seven-day outlook We'll be watching it closely as we go along in that Thursday, Friday uh, time frame there. And a slight chance we might see a little rain and snow mix, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going out on a limb with that one just yet. We shall see. All right, there you have it. Back to you, Morgan. All right, Steve, thanks. Have you ever wondered why these Snapchat spectacles are trending right here in Seattle? It's all because you can now buy them online for 130 bucks. These sunglasses let you film snaps at the touch of a button. Now, the videos get saved to your Snapchat app, where you can edit and share them. The glasses were only available in vending machines like this one, which briefly popped up in Seattle just a couple weeks ago. Well, if you don't know, today is National Love Your Pet Day, as if you needed it. And when it comes to spoiling our furry friends, the sky's the limit. So what kind of dough are some people willing to throw down for Fido? Combo's Kelly Koopman shows us in your daily list. <laughs> love our pets and some out there know no limit when it comes to spoiling their animals rotten and these four things prove it number one who says weddings are just for people Los Angeles based Hollywood pet parties is a pet bakery and event planning business they don't just offer the weddings they even throw in the bachelor or bachelorette party and they cater for all the four-legged friends number two how about a spa day Paradise Pet Lodge in Woodenville offers therapeutic swims for 50 to $75, along with aromatherapy massages for a little over $35. Number three, rather than your run-of-the-mill dog bed, some people out there splurge for something like this, a $16,000 Eiffel Tower luxury bed or a Swarovski Couture bed priced at about $10,400. Number four, the life of a pet can be all too short. And while most of us just use pictures or videos to remember them, some prefer to commission pictures paintings of their pet. Pet portraits offered by Art Paw can cost as little as $135 and as much as $1,200 depending on what you want. But all of that is out of most of our budgets. Your dog will know that they're loved if you give them a treat or give them a little extra belly rub. Kelly Koopman's Como News. <laughs> I love it. Still ahead, almost $1,600 how a new study put that cost on the commute for a Seattle driver each year. Stay with us. Okay, let's go live to California now, where police are holding a news conference about the shooting that killed one police officer and wounded another. Let's listen in. This individual has been the person who's responsible for that murder, so we're following up on that now. So it looks like he did a murder over there early this morning. Uh, took the car and then happened to be driving through Whittier when he was uh, got in the accident and then was contacted by the with the officers. Any idea why he was in Whittier? The 
murder took place this morning, you're saying? And again, you're uh, looking yes, live as police morning. hold a news conference to update us on the ambush of two police officers who were shot moments after arriving at a crash scene. We do know one officer died, but doctors believe the other one will recover. Well, many of you are sharing and liking this Instagram post by Kurt Cobain's daughter today. Frances was less than two years old when her father committed suicide back in 1994. You can see she wrote, today would have been your 50th birthday. You are loved and you are missed. Thank you for giving me the gift of life. Forever your daughter, Frances Bean Cobain. Well, how long do you spend sitting in your car going nowhere because of traffic each and every year? Well, this new study from a Kirkland company found the average Seattle driver spends more than two days sitting in traffic each year. Pretty bad, right? Enrich's claims cost each of us, it costs each of us about $1,500 a year in gas, lost time, and fees businesses pass on to us because of delayed deliveries. As bad as that sounds, Seattle didn't even crack the company's top 20 for most congested cities in the world, believe it or not. That goes to L.A., Moscow, Russia, and New York. Seattle, we came in at 23rd. She is no dancing queen, but one local mayor taking the world by storm one step at a time. Come with Patrick Quinn looking into that story right now. Have you seen it? It's a video that's starting to go viral. The mayor of Auburn dancing to Justin Timberlake's Can't Stop the Feeling. Some of the moves, maybe not so good. We got reaction today from people who live in Auburn about what they think, and we also sat down with the mayor. What's the reason behind her rhythm, or lack thereof? That story tonight. <laughs> All right, we'll be looking forward to that, Patrick. Thanks. A little-known historian and tour guide getting popular in Washington, D.C. because he knows everything there is to know about our country's first ladies, from Martha Washington to Melania Trump. Our digital news partner, Circa, went for the grand tour. Andrew Oak isn't your average historian who knows a lot about first ladies. That's why they call him the first ladies man. Right here in Washington, D.C., their influence is so great, and they had such a huge impact on this city and our lives, it's easy to walk around town and see evidence of their influence everywhere. So the Washington Monument, it's more than just for walking up and snapping photos, right? Absolutely. It's one of the most iconic symbols of Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, and it was finished when First Lady Lucy Hayes reinvigorated the project after the Civil War. Next up, the National Gallery of Art. So, not every first lady was married to a president, right? No, absolutely. Uh, there have been nieces and daughters and, and all kinds of women that have stepped in and done hostessing duties when a spouse was not available to the president. Harriet Lane being one of them. President Buchanan was the only bachelor president not to marry, and she's why we have the National Gallery of Art. And what's a tour of D.C. without visiting the White House? Has every first lady lived in the White House? Well, not every first lady has spent every day in the White House. Martha Washington didn't have a White House to live in. But Melania Trump is young and in good health, so we would think that she should or would. If she does not, it will not be unprecedented, but it will be unusual in more recent times. This was the White House in 1814. The British oh. burned the White House during the War of 1812. Wow. And this is where Dolly had hundreds of guests would go into this relatively small house compared to the White House. Well, Andy, I had a blast today learning about our country's first ladies on the back of your Harley. It was amazing. For Circa, I'm Kay Ingram. Hmm. Who'd have thought? Mary Knob standing by in the news and with a look at what's coming up on Como News at 4. Mary, how's it look? Morgan, thank you. A man is asking why someone would murder his elderly mother. As the investigation into the homicide of a Snohomish County woman continues, we speak to the victim's son, who is desperately looking for answers tonight. Plus, the dangerous find made by workers cleaning up a Seattle homeless camp coming up at 4 o'clock. All right, we will see you then. Well, we know many of you took the time to get outside during our holiday weekend, so here are just a few of the photos that you submitted. Of course, you can share all your photos with us by using the hashtag ComoLOZ. Time now for our favorite hashtag of the day. Hashtag what I learned at the gym. Just post something you learned while happening to be at the gym. Some people like TD went serious saying results are seen from consistency over time, 
have patience. I like the motivation. And there were many more people posting things like Molly, who said she gets more exercise jogging after the ice cream truck. I hear you, Molly. And then Sarah tweeted, barking gets parking gets better in February. It certainly does. OK, we got a great video today making the rounds. Check it out. <laughs> this is a dog apparently that is just too tired of waiting for its owner. Tim and Yvonne Blankenship stopped into this Ohio restaurant for some lunch when they saw a diamond honking the horn and barking for the owner to hurry up. People living in the nearby area commented on Facebook, Diamond does this sort of thing all the time, actually. Pretty smart dog. As always, if you spot a trending video, send it our way. You know, it's just how to hit that horn just right. Well, remember, on the air online, we are always here for you. Head to comonews.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And Como News at 4, just 90 seconds away. Stay with us.